Good to see you in Las Vegas, Hanato. Um, <laughs> it's Tuesday of fight week, and you're going with the, the casual athletic wear, but uh, I was curious to see if you'd be wearing an expensive watch on your wrist. And that's, that's pretty much always the case with you, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I like watches. What, what about watches? Has that like always been your thing? Or when no. you got some money, you started? No, yeah. no. no. Uh, I, I think people use watches and some stuff like to keep value because this, these things like uh, on the great market, they can, mm -hmm. you can make money off it. And, and if you get from a dealership, you can sell. I'm not selling. I'm just telling. If you look the charts, like SP500 and Rolex index, yeah. you're going to see the prices are going up. So you're not spending money, you're investing money. Yeah, in yeah. Watches. So here I thought you just like the look and you like the having something nice on your wrist, but you're just always thinking about investments and value and, and that kind of way of thinking, huh? Yeah, I think, I, think, I think you should not care too much about the watch. It's something that I like, but at the same time, if they offer me a good price for that, I sell on the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this fight came together pretty quickly, I feel like, right? Like, yeah. they called you the day of that Miami card, and you agreed, and then they announced it, basically, right? It was very, very quick. Um, can you kind of just talk about where you were at? Were you expecting that? Like, were you very comfortable taking the fight right away? Because that's, that's not usually how it works, right? Is that uh, a fight comes together four weeks before, and they just announce it immediately. Yeah, I was not expecting at all to fight in UFC 300. I was, of course, training because I always do. But at the same time, it's opportunity in... I'm not getting any younger, so I have to take advantage of the opportunities, and it's a good fight for me. Uh, it's a fight that I'm really comfortable. Uh, I think I have everything to beat Jalen Turner, and when they offer me, uh, to be really honest with you, I wanted the fight to be on Brazil, mm -hmm. because I would have, uh, of course, the crowd by my side, and I would be fighting in Brazil, but in the end of the day, being UFC 300 is... Uh, is something special too. You said you felt like uh, you have all the skills to beat Jalen Turner. Is is there just like, I mean, I think of him as like, uh, maybe one reason you would want more time is just to get used to a very tall, long opponent. Is that right? Or you just felt, you just feel comfortable with his fighting style? What about him just made you think like, yeah, I can win that fight in four weeks? Because we were supposed to fight uh, like two years ago, one year ago, because we are on the top 15, we, we know each other, everybody know. I know who I can fight, I, who I can fight, and he always on my side. So, uh, uh, my last fight, I fought Dober. He's a soft power too, he's a striker too, of course, he's very tall. Uh, I wanted more time, but at the same time, I think the time is perfect, because I am always training, I just had to do some adjustment, and, and then we are here. Uh, the, the problem was like the weight cut, you know, five, four yeah. weeks, five weeks, the, 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 big, the biggest problem is the weight cut, but I did everything right and now, uh, last week well, I was a little bit heavy, but today I'm perfect. What, uh, what did you have to do to make up on the, sh on, because it was a little bit shorter than you used to to cut the weight, what did you have to go through to, to get it down? Because usually when I don't have a fight, I start the camp doing a lot of uh, cardio, mm -hmm. like running a lot, like preparing myself on the bag, uh, like building the base for the sparrings and for the training sessions. But since I, I only had like four weeks to, I jump in on the sparrings and I didn't do the, like the preparation, the base. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I fought like February, so I'm still uh, coming off the, the whole training camp. So I'm okay. One, I mean, obviously UFC 300, arguably the most stacked card in the history of the UFC, which is fantastic. That also means a lot of competition for like performance bonuses. I'm not even caring about that. <laughs> yeah, who do you think is your biggest competition to get a, a performance uh, bonus out of? Against, I go against Charles and Armand, Max Holloway, Alex Pereira. That is so, even a guy like, even guys like uh, 125, like 135, no, it's 25, right, Figueiredo? 35. Three? Yeah, th three. Yeah, so even guys on 135, like Figueiredo and Cody Garbrandt, former champions, they could get a bonus. So I hope Dana White uh, showed the money this Saturday. <laughs> Did you, uh, do you think about that sometimes? Like going into a card, like, uh, yeah, I'd love to win a performance bonus, but with this one, you were like, oh, yes. I'm not even thinking about yes, it on I'm this one? Yes, I'm not even thinking about it. If they didn't they get the bonus on Apex, they're not going to give me a, on UFC 300. Of course, it depends on the performance, but I'm really focused on the fight right now. You beat Jalen Turner. What do you think that uh, opens up for you? What do, what do you think the options that come along with beating the top 10 guy? He's ranked number 10 right now. Th there is a lot of options. Uh, but again, I'm not, I'm not too crazy about the rankings. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I, I want to build a fan base. 
that's for me isn't the most important right now because they're gonna get you on, on the big fights. I don't know. Let's see. I I, I don't have a. I I, I like Ben Hooker. I like I like to fight Benil Dariush. I like Paddy Pimblet. I like all these fights. Like the bigger the name, more popularity they have, mm -hmm. it's gonna be better for me. So I'm I'm that's my mindset right now. You got your post-fight speech lined up because you deliver some good ones. Do you practice those things? Do you have an idea of what you want to say? Not at all. Not, not at, at all. all. Not at all. Not at all. I have. I have some. I like to read and I like to to do other stuff. And, and sometimes I I am with that shit on my mind and then I speak because my English is not very well, so is is not very good. So it's very hard for me to articulate the way that I want. So sometimes I just rant. But 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 I don't I don't have a particular thing that I, I will say that because I, I can ask you imagine you have to fight 15 minutes and remember something that you that, yeah. that's that's hard so I just I just talk what is coming to my mind. Mm -hmm. Who do you think you're like talking to when you give those post fight speeches? Are you talking to like the arena? I talk to talking, myself. You're talking to yourself. I talk I talk I'm, I am talking to myself. I don't know why. You know, I talk to myself. It's <laughs> that's, crazy. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, last thing I'll ask you is because lightweight division is always like one of the most interesting divisions. It's one, arguably the deepest division. And right now, it's kind of like going through that time where it's like Charles is fighting Armand. Dustin just fought Saint Denis. You know, Justin Gaethje had to fight Fazeev. It's like uh, you've got like kind of the new guard fighting the old guard. Who do you think, if we fast forward like a year from now, who do you think are the top five lightweights? What's the top five right now? It's, it's still ju Justin, obviously. Charles is, is up there. Uh, I believe Armand's right behind him. Darius is still up there. Just who, do you, who in your mind, like, do you think it's still going to be like some of the names that we know, or do you think we're going through a period of like we're going to see some new names at the top five in lightweight? I hope we're going to see a good name, uh, a new names like Renato Moicano. That's a name that I want to be on the top five. Sure. Even though, like I say, I'm not caring too much about rankings. Of course, being on the top five going to get you on the title conversations and stuff. But at the same time, I feel Charles Oliveira, Armand, they are not going anywhere in a year, any soon. Mm -hmm. And even Dustin Poirier, especially if he fights to Islam, even if he loses, he still be on the top five. So the top five of the division is very hard because they fight for the belt and then they fight each other. So mm -hmm. it's very hard to get a crack at the top 10 and the top five. And I hope I will get after this fight. Let's see. Well, it was a pleasure speaking with you, man. Were you uh, you gonna go with like the athletic look for the for the whole week, or you got something you got something planned no, for the I, wardrobe? No, I, I, I get a, a, a good outfit you for the for the, for? yeah for the press conference. Of course, uh, I found a uh, uh, sponsor for that. Of course, I'm trying nice. to monetize everything. <laughs> of course, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just trying to have a good time this this fight week. Who would have known that just wanting money really bad could be a way to make more money? Like that's why people are like are are being entertained by you is because you're just so. I want money, money more kind of, I want money. So just wanting the money is getting people to like like you more and you making more money. Yeah, but I, I don't think it's just because of the money. Because like money, money doesn't really exist. Money is the idea of we trading stuff. Mm -hmm. So this camera or this, or this watch, people perceive the value of that and they give you money. So when I talk about money, I'm talking about trades. Mm -hmm. Voluntary trades, people trading, and I and my thing with money is money can buy time, money can buy uh, uh, security, right? Can 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 buy uh, healthy for your family. So that's what I want, and that's what I want to people realize. Because if you don't understand money, if you don't understand how mo how how they create money, the value of money, you don't care about that, mm -hmm. and you're never gonna get money. And, th and that's why people that have money, they will get more money. And yeah. people that don't have, because these people, they understand the idea, how to sell, how, how, they, how they contribute to the society, and how, like, uh, how, how the, the, the things work, you know? It's very hard for me to say in, in yeah. English, yeah. but th that's the idea, to have the money to live free, and, and to have a good life, you know, and to not, and to don't, because look, wealthy, somebody is, they don't give a shit about anybody because, you know, they don't need, they don't need, and I want to be like that. I want to be uh, all about my family. Mm -hmm.